For tape, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday morning, November the 29th, 1991. Thanksgiving weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook, Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the minister of the morning. And as we go on to the Word today, we ask you to minister life to His Lord. We ask you to open our hearts to receive the engrafted Word that's able to save our souls. Father God, we come against every stronghold as we go into the Scriptures, and we bind every withholding force that we withhold from your people and that would cause our hearts not to respond and listen. We ask you to minister life to us today, Lord, and move, we pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Turn today to the Scriptures with me to the book of Revelation. Appreciate getting back, uh, back to Lake Hamilton. Um, Different brethren here. Good to hear our brother last night. How many enjoyed that last night? I just got to hear a little of it, but I enjoyed it. Good to see Brother Norman Parrish again, his wife, and Glenn and Irma, and Jack, I guess, will be here tonight, right? A little while. Praise the Lord. Go to the book of Revelation, and let's look at verse 1 together. If you got your Bibles, let's read it together. Praise the Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Praise the Lord. How many likes the book of Revelation? Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God has a message for this hour, don't you? Amen. And I believe that, that the message, of course, is Jesus. And I believe the revelation of Jesus needs to come forth and be revealed in you and me. Now, you'll notice this revelation came from the Father to Jesus, and from Jesus uh, to the angel, and from the angel to John, and from John to the church. I mean, oh, the church needs to hear this revelation. And John, of course, was an apostle, but yet he was also a prophet. He was, he was a prophet of God. We know he preached this revelation, and he was projected into the day of the Lord. How I many know oh, the day of the Lord has not yet taken place? But it's coming. We're approaching the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're approaching the coming of the Lord. How many believe that? Amen. Now turn just a second with me to Titus. Uh, I've got all kind of notes and things, but I, you know, I'm subject to the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'd rather listen to his notes anyway. Titus chapter 2. You know, we're just studying to show ourselves approved. Titus chapter 2, and look at verse 13. And I want to ask you a question. What is the blessed hope? Just shout back to me. I won't embarrass you or put you down. I don't care what answer you give me. What is the blessed hope? Well, well one, at a time. one at a time. Somebody over here. What did you say? Come on. Christ Jesus. Come on. All right. What was that, Reba? All right. What else? All right. Let's read the Scripture. Looking for that blessed hope. What's the next word? What's the next word? And, looking for the glorious hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you can't have the second part without the first part. Can you hear me? He said, we've got to be looking for that blessed hope. It is Christ, the hope of glory. Where is he at? He's in you and me, isn't he? Christ in you. Come on. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Christ comes in me to take me into Him. And as much as I let Christ come in me, that's as much as I can move into Him as well. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That shows me something else. There's got to be a quick work in this end time. And I believe the, the, the blessed hope is this, basically, is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And it's to be like Jesus when he appears. Hallelujah. And that cannot happen unless we let Jesus come in us. Can you say amen? Now, before I go any farther, I want to minister to some back, 
problems here. I, God's not showing me who it is, but I know it's here. It's right in this area of the back. Just stand to your feet where you are right now. Stand right to your feet. Reach your hands out to these people. Would you do it? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against the back trouble, the lower back area, in the name of Jesus. We just take dominion now over that condition and their physical body. We command now all the infirmities to, to loose their bodies now in the name of Jesus. We speak against every spirit, every withholding force, and we bind you and command you to loose their backs now in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise. Can you do it? Give the Lord praise. Come on, give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're looking for the blessed hope, but that cannot ha happen unless we allow Him to come in us. That second part, I should say, the glorious coming of the Lord Himself. And I believe Jesus is coming. How many believe that? And I believe that He's coming this way. He's coming bodily. He's coming personally. He's coming visibly. He's coming literally. And He's coming gloriously. Hallelujah. But before He comes out there in the air, He must come in you. Come on. And in me. Can you say amen? He's coming in the saints. And He's coming with the saints. He's coming in fire. And He's coming with fire. He's coming in the clouds. And He's coming with clouds. How many, how many know that's Bible? Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. I don't preach the going of the church, but the coming of the Lord. I don't preach the disappearing of the church, but the appearing of the Lord Jesus in you first and then in the air. He is coming. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. So we need the revelation of the Lord himself. Now, I believe right before Jesus breaks uh, the eastern sky and comes literally, there must be a people prepared that will be like him. Now, look in 1 John chapter 3. Look in 1 John chapter 3 with us, please. 1 John chapter 3. And the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. The word there, though, is technon. It's for children. But how many know he's leading us towards sonship? Amen. We have not arrived yet. We are not full-grown sons yet. But wherever we are, we've got to keep pressing on. Can you say amen? That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of the children of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this, or that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Come on, for we shall see him as he is. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying this. There's got to be a work of purification in you and me. And did you notice that last phrase? Uh, I think, no, I didn't read verse 3. Every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is what? Pure. And we know God is pure. And that word pure means without fault. Now turn to Revelation 14, one scripture. One scripture, Revelation 14 with that. And look at a verse here. In verses um, 6, I believe it is, speaking of 144,000. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, no deceit, for they are without fault. They are without fault. Paul, everybody see that? Praise God. Before the throne of God. Hallelujah. Well, how many know some of us still got some faults in us? And he's got to take those things out of us. Amen? And I don't believe we can come into the revelation of Jesus and the sonship without getting cleaned up. How many believe that? Amen. Without deliverance. Now, I know we have a problem in the church. We have those who preach sonship and who don't believe in deliverance. We have those who preach deliverance, don't believe in sonship. How I many know we need both of them? We need them combined. Hallelujah. With, because without one, you'll never have the other. Can you hear that? Without, without deliverance, you cannot be a son. I don't believe. I believe it's going to come through much deliverance. How many believe that? And you know, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. How many read, ever read that? And in Revelation chapter 12, he, uh, Satan falls. He comes down. And I believe the key to Satan falling is the, the deliverance ministry of people being set free. Can you say amen? amen? I believe that. If you read Luke 10 and Revelation 12 and put them together. And there was a message God has given to me this year that I've preached many times. In fact, I preached uh, last time I was here on it. But I've preached it many times across the country and even uh, overseas uh, this year. And that is the, the stars are falling. And I believe the stars are coming down. But how many know we've got to pray for those that fall? We've got to pray mercy, come on, and grace for those who fall and those who will yet fall. And pray that we don't fall. Can you say amen? amen. Let's turn to, to Revelation 12 just a second. 
Uh, I'm just open to the Holy Spirit. I don't, I, the brother asked me what I was going to preach, and I said, I don't know. i got several things working. I really, I really meant that. I've just got so much that we could go into. But chapter 12 of Revelation, the Bible here tells us something, that there's a woman pregnant. And thank God, you know, there is hope today, I believe. You know, let me tell you this. Hope leads to travail. And travail, uh, we know if, if it's a real travail, there's conception, there's a pregnancy. And there's a seed been deposited. I thank God for the seed today, the Word of God. And where the Word is, there is faith. And where faith is, there's a vision. And vision leads you back always to hope. Can you say amen? And without a vision, we perish. Actually, actually that means without a vision, we're made naked. Without a prophetic vision, we're made naked. And so here he said in chapter 12, there's a woman pregnant. Uh, this woman's a church. I used to teach it as Israel, but it's the church. It's the Israel of God, all right. Galatians 6 talks about but it's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and she's pregnant. And notice in verse 1, there appeared a great wonder or sign in heaven. In heaven. How many know the woman's to be in the heavens today, in the heavenly places in Christ? Amen? You know, our p problem is we don't know our position in Christ today. Ephesians chapter 1. We need to know our position. We need to know also our walk life is right. And how many know we can always war if, we're, if we know our position and we're walking right with God? Three things in the book of Ephesians. Your position, uh, your walk life, and there's war. Just recently I had a confrontation with, I believe, the prince, one of the princes over at Tulsa uh, when I was praying at night. And I tell you, it's a big religious spirit, one of them, uh, that's over at Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we began to come against that spirit. I mean, no religious spirits are real today, too. You better believe it. And so we had to confront that spirit, and I knew the direction he was coming from. And uh, so we warred a while. I tell you, I believe we're, ready to, we're, we're about ready to move into warfare we've never moved into in the United States. In the United States. And so we've got to begin to begin to cry out to God. And I believe to stand this next year, hear me, to stand in this next year is going to take much prayer in your life and my life. It's going to take much prayer because it's going to be a different year. Just remember that. Now, chapter 12, this woman is crying out, travailing in birth and in pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder, or sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and he, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman that was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, we've been taught that this, these stars are those who fell well back, well back there. We know angels fell. There was a fall. We know that, and that's true. But I, I declare to you, this is not something just happened back there. This is something that's happening at the end of the age. These stars are going to fall. God said to me years ago, uh, I remember he spoke to me on a Sunday morning. He said, the stars are falling. And then I had some visitations uh, in the night season, uh, about several of, several of them. And I believe that we're going to see more falling. We better pray. We better pray as never before. Amen. Can you say amen? That God will keep us. And these stars are, are ministries and uh, people who are going to fall out of the heavenlies into the carnal realm, into the earth realm. And so we see something here in verse 4 now. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. Now, even though he's standing before the woman, the church, he's not after the woman. He's after the seed of the woman. He's after the one that she brings forth. He's going to stand before this woman. And he's going, to, he's going to seek to devour that child, that man-child, as soon as he is born. That word born, there is a birthing in the soul. God is coming into the souls of his people. Hallelujah. I mean, it's time to get the mind of Christ in this hour. We need the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And that, that has a lot with growing up, being delivered, and a lot of other things with that. Verse 5, she brought forth, come on, a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Praise God. So we see that Satan's tail is going to cast down the stars. Now turn to Isaiah. Let's just look at a couple of things on this, and we'll go back to Revelation 1 in just a minute. Go to Isaiah chapter 9. Turn there with me in your Bible. Isaiah 9. Praise God. Isaiah 9. I want to show you. I want to show you this tail ministry of the dragon. Praise God. How many know it's real today? Isaiah 9, look at verse 14. Therefore the Lord 
will cut off. How many believe God's cutting some things off? And He's going to cut off from Israel, or today the church, head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. The ancient and the honorable, He's the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, come on, He is the tail. So we see one of the meanings of the tail ministry is prophet who teaches lies. And I want to tell you, the church is full of prophets teaching lies. We see lies on the television, we hear it on the radio, we see it in the churches, we see it in printed uh, material, and tape ministries that goes out. There's a lot of prophets lying to people. And we need some real discernment in this hour to know what's right and what's wrong. Can you say amen? And so it says that these prophets are teaching lies, and he's the tale. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. They are destroyed. Now, the word tail means to wag, and it means, hear this word tail, and it means hindmost. Turn over to Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25. I'm going to give you another scripture here, and I want to show you what I believe the tail represents also. I've got so many Bibles and notes, I can't already keep it straight here. Deuteronomy 25. Look at verse, look at verse uh, eight, uh, 17. The Lord said, Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when, when you were come out of Egypt. Egypt's picture of the world. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost. The word tail means hindmost. He smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble. Notice that. Behind thee when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Amalek, a picture of the flesh, does not fear God. Can you say amen? And notice he's hitting the feeble, he's hitting the faint-hearted, and those who, uh, and, and the Bible said, and those that are weary, and he fears not God. And God said, you'll blot him out. There is a constant warfare with the spirit and the flesh, isn't there? Daily. Can you say amen? There is a constant overcoming of this flesh man. Now let's go back to the book of Revelation where we started. I just want to touch on that. Back to Revelation 1. I want to go back to just a minute now. And it said, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Praise God. How many thank God today for the ministries, the true ministers of apostles and prophets and teachers and shepherds and evangelists? And we see that John was a true minister. He, he had the revelation of Jesus. You know, I believe it this way. The, the apostle governs. The prophet guides. The evangelist gathers. The shepherds guards and the teacher grinds. So we're going to do some grinding this morning. We're going to teach. And a teacher, you know, apostles the thumb. The prophet's the index finger. The evangelist is the long finger. And the ring finger, the, there's a vein that goes all the way to the heart. That's the shepherd. How I many know you've got to have a shepherd's heart if you're going to be in the ministry? And you've got to have a ministry uh, that's full of love. It's got to be in the heart. It can't just be in the head. You can't just lord it over people. But that little finger can get in the ear and get the wax out. And so we're going to try to get in here this morning with this teaching. Praise the Lord. So the revelation of Jesus. Now this word revelation, it means an unveiling. It means to take the cover off. And it means coming, a coming one time. Manifestation, it means to be revealed. Uh, it means many things uh, in the Scripture to go into all this, uh, what it means. How I many you know the Bible said that all creation is waiting for the manifestation, come on, of the sons of God. And that word manifestation means revelation. All the creation is waiting for this revelation of God's Son. And it's the revelation of Jesus in the Son, hallelujah, that we've got to have. Can you say amen? Oh, we've got to have Jesus this morning. And so this revelation is coming uh, to the servants of God, I believe. Now, notice in verse 2, who bear record, who bear record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now notice here, John says here in the Scripture that he bear record of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Now turn to Revelation 19, just a minute. Turn to Revelation 19. Let's see what the testimony of Jesus is. I could quote it, but we'll just look and see here what the Lord is saying to us. Look in verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. 
And he said to me, this is the angel John saying, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Praise God. So John said, I bear record of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, that prophetic testimony of Jesus Christ. Now turn to Revelation 11. Let me give you another scripture on that word, testimony. Revelation 11. How many know the Lord's talking about His two witnesses here? And the two witnesses is the Word and the Spirit in a people. It is not just two men. We have been taught that before, but it's the Spirit and the Word in a people. Let me tell you this, you, and you don't have to believe what I say, but check it out. Seek the Lord. But I believe that the man-child in Revelation 12, the 144,000, chapter 14, and Revelation 11, the, son, the two witnesses are the same people. They're the same people in the Scriptures. Praise God. Now, in chapter 11, notice something, what it says here in verses, uh, let's see, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony. Somebody's not going to die till they finish their testimony. How many want to go out beforehand? You want to, or do you want to finish your testimony? God wants us to finish that which He started in us. Can you say amen? And God has started a good work in me, and I know He will perform it unto the day, come on, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, brethren, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And I believe these who probably will lay their life down, will be, they will be prepared for that. God will prepare His people to lay their life down. Can you say amen? And I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a lot of people lay their life down. But I'll tell you, Jesus is coming in a people. And without Jesus coming in you, you and I do not have that strength to do that. Can you say amen? Now, back in chapter 1, he said, I saw, and I bear record of this Word of God and the testimony of Jesus and all that I saw. Now, verse 3, blessed is he that readeth. Now, notice three blessings. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things that are written therein, for the time is at hand, and yet, and yet it hadn't happened yet. John was ushered into the day of the Lord uh, 2,000 years ahead of time, and John saw this great day of the Lord revealed and unfolded. And he said, the time is at hand. In the Spirit, how many know there's no distance and no time? It's when we're out of the Spirit that we, we just don't see as we should see. But when we're in the Spirit, His coming is imminent. Come on, help me now. The, the coming of the Lord is imminent. These things, uh, John said, is at hand. Praise God. And so John is seeing these great events taking place. Now, verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be to you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before, come on, his throne, the seven spirits of God. And we could say a lot about that. There's so much we need to go in and teach on the seven spirits of God. But they're real. That's his fullness. It was in, that fullness was in Jesus as he walked the earth. And I believe at the end of the age, these sons he's raising up, his fullness will be in them. Hallelujah. And once again, the earth will see the manifestation of the Lord Jesus in a people again. Can you say amen? But they're going to do the works of Jesus. That means you're going to see deliverance. Come on. You're going to see people saved and healed and filled and set free. Amen. Can you say amen? I believe that. Praise you, Jesus. I tell you, they've come too late to tell me deliverance isn't real. I tell you, I've been delivered of a lot of things, and it's been such a help to my own life uh, in growing up in the Lord. I, I thank God for the ministry of deliverance uh, that is coming forth in His people. Praise the Lord. Now, look at verse 5. And from Jesus, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, come on, in his blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, I don't believe everybody's going to rule and reign with Jesus like people say. We can talk about it, but how many know it's got to be, become a reality in our lives? Turn up to Revelation 20 just a minute. Now, we say kings and priests, but a better rendering is, a, is kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. God is making us a kingdom of priests. And so up in chapter 20... Yes, that's right. The king is Jesus, and he's over the kingdom, and he should be over us. Chapter 20 of Revelation, look at verse 4. And John said, I saw thrones, and they set up on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded 
for the witness or the testimony of Jesus and for the Word of God. Now notice, here are some people that lay their life down. Now, first of all, we know that starts within us. How many know there's a cross within you and I we have to bear? Isn't that right? Amen. If you're going to be a wine skin, you've got to lose your head first. Come on, help me. Come on, help me this morning. You gotta lose that old carnal mind. If you're gonna be a wineskin, that wineskin, that head had to come off. Amen? And they use the neck for a spout. Praise the Lord. But this, this people, I believe as well, is gonna lay their life down. But notice something here. They were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the Word of God, which had not worshiped the beast. Notice that had not worshiped the beast. That means they lived and reigned during the time of the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Or in their hands, and they lived, and what else did they do? They reigned. If we suffer with him, come on, we'll reign with him. They lived and reigned. Actually, they lived again. They come alive again. I think another translation more or less brings out. Or oh, they lived again. They lived, it says here, notice, uh, and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead, and he goes down and explains that later, uh, lived not again till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So we see there's going to be kings and priests that's going to rule and reign with Christ, but many are going to lay their life down. Now notice something here in this verse, if I can uh, bring it out again. I believe it's in verses uh, 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. So to be part of the first res resurrection, he said, you'll be, you'll be blessed and you'll be, you must be holy. And notice, on the, such the second death hath no power. On sets the second death hath no power. Now turn to Revelation 2. Turn to Revelation 2. I want to show you who these people are. I want to tell you, Linda, you're right. We've got to pray. We've got to break some strongholds over this place today. And in the name of Jesus, come on, let's just do it right now. I come against that stronghold over this place now. That would be set against this Word of God. I bind you. I command you to loose this uh, people in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit, I bind you now. You loose this place in the name of Jesus. I command you by the authority of the Son of God. Now, chapter 2 of Revelation. Chapter 2 of Revelation. Our, our battle's not with flesh and blood, is it? It's in the Spirit. Look in verse 9. Now, listen to what he said to this church. I want to show you who this Revelation 20 people are. Verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. They were rich because they had the Lord. Now, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. There's a lot of people saying they're Christians today. But how many know it's more than just talking? We've got to walk it. And are not. But they are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. There are people today prisoners in their own homes, in their own churches, on their own job, wherever. That you may be tried, you shall have tribulation, come on, ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Be faithful to death, and I will give thee, come on, a crown of life. God said if you'll be faithful to death, you'll receive the victor's crown. Hallelujah. And I believe the victor's crown are going to be given to those that are faithful. And the Bible said those that are with him, come on, are called chosen and faithful, Revelation 17, 14. Now look at verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches, and he that overcometh shall not, shall not be hurt of the second death, which is, come on, the lake of fire. These are his overcomers, I believe, that are faithful to death. And back in Revelation 20, notice again in verse 6 what it says, that on such uh, the second death hath no power. These in Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6, are God's overcomers at the end of the age. And that lake of fire has no power nor authority over them. Can you say amen? They are blessed and they are holy. Praise God. How many believe that? Oh, I believe that. Now, let, let's look at that crown just a second. Turn to 2 Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy 4. And look at verses, um, look at verse, we'll start with verse 5. Second Timothy 4, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, Timothy, make full proof of thy ministry. I believe every ministry is going to be proven in this hour, whether it's true or false. Next verse. 
For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand, Paul said. He's about ready to lay his life down. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. Sometimes we fight, but it's not always so good. <laughs> but I fought a good fight. Then he said, I finished my course. Oh, hallelujah. Another place he said that I may finish my course with joy. I have kept the faith. Now look at verse 8. Henceforth, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Now, we have to look for his appearing. We must be like him when he appears, and we must love his appearing. This crown is given to the overcomers right here. Praise the Lord. This is the overcoming crown. I believe that the overcomers will receive this crown. Now look over in 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Look at verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. How many know the prize is the goal that we're going for? How many know Jesus is the prize? Come on now. Oh, yes, he is. We've got to be running with a vision, and the vision is Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Now, this is not just being uh, just the new birth here we're talking about. We're talking about overcoming, being made worthy. Come on now. To reign with him. He said, notice, to run this race, you've got to run all. Everybody starts in the race, but not everybody's going to finish. Not everybody's going to receive a prize. But one receives a prize, so run that you may obtain. Know what lane you're running in and know who you're running with. And how many know to run with Jesus? You've got to have your eye again upon the Lord. Amen? And every man that striveth for the Master is temperate in all things. You don't have to be temperate to be saved. How many just have to come by grace and receive Jesus? Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. Paul said, I know where I'm running. Hallelujah. So far I not as one that beats the air. I'm not a shadow boxer. I make every blow count against the enemy. But here's the key in verse 27. But I keep under my body. I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway or actually disqualified for the prize, for the prize, for the crown. Now turn to Philippians chapter 3 just a minute. Then we'll go back to Revelation in just a minute. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, and look at verse uh, 10. Paul said that I might may know him and the power, come on, of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable to his death. The fellowship, notice that, fellowship of his suffering, conformed to his death. Now, verse 11. Now, notice verse 11. Here's a word. This word resurrection is different. It's only used one time in the Scripture. It's ex anastasi. It's only used one time. But it's a resurrection from the mouth out among the dead. It's a resurrection coming out from among the dead. Now, the Amplified said it's a, it's a spiritual and a moral resurrection while yet in the body. And I believe it's the best translation on it. Praise the Lord. And it's Christ coming in a people. Come on, shout me, don't shout me down. It's true. It's Christ coming in us. Now, Paul was not afraid of losing out on the general res resurrection. But Paul had not yet attained to this resurrection while yet walking in the body. Come on now. And he said, by any means, I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. So there was that inward coming of the Lord coming forth within us. How many of we're going to be changed from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, or from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from joy to joy, and so forth. And so Paul said that I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I'd already attained. Either were made perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which I have also apprehended, been apprehended of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, I press towards the mark, or the goal, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How many know there's a real pressing? We're either pressing or we being, we're being, being pressed, and maybe both of them. You're going to be pressed, and yet you've got to press. I press towards the mark. 
You know that word press is the same as uh, 1 Corinthians 14 where it says, follow after charity. Remember that? Desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Follow after love. How many know Jesus is the love of God? Love is not a blob. The love of God is a person. We follow Jesus. We follow the love of God. We follow Him. And that word follow means to press, but it means persecution. If you're going to press, you're going to be persecuted. Come on. It may be your next door neighbor, maybe your family, maybe your church, whoever. But if you're going to press, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be hated. Those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall, come on, suffer persecution. It's true. Praise the Lord. I press towards that mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, that is not just your, your salvation. We thank God for that. We thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But this is moving for the prize, going for the crown, moving for the overcoming realm, being made worthy to walk and rule and reign with Christ. Come on, help me this morning. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12. And right here he tells us, in this race, we're compassed about. Uh, well, let's go back to chapter 11 just a minute. Chapter 11. It says in verse 39, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth, and these all having obtained a good report. They got a good report card. Through faith received not what? The promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they, they, those heroes of faith that went on, that they without us should not be made perfect or complete. And then he said, we are compassed about with this great cloud of witnesses. How I many know they're saying, sick them, run for it, go on, overcome. They're watching in the spirit, the spiritual progression, I believe, of what's happening in the church. There's no devil where they are. We have a devil to contend with. And they're watching, anticipating, and, and I know they're cheering us on to run the race. Can you say amen? And notice what he says here, brethren. He said, number one, we've got to lay aside every weight. And number two, the sin that so, just so easily beset us. And then he said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And how are we going to do that? Looking to Jesus, come on, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I mean, there's a cross to endure today. He despised the shame, there's some shame with it, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. So we've got to lay aside every weight and the sin that besets us. We've got to look to Jesus. We've got to run with patience. And this running, of course, there's this got to be some joy with it. There's some endurance, of course. There's a cross. There's shame. There's despisement. But God can give you joy right in the midst of all of that. And the Bible said we've got to consider him, praise God, who endured all this. And he sat down on the throne. And God's overcomers are going to sit down and rule with Christ, those that overcome. How many believe that? Praise God. Now turn to Second Peter, uh, First Peter. We'll talk, go back to this word revelation. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. First Peter 1, 13. And Peter says something about this revelation. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Now, we think of our loins down here. I mean, you know, that speaks of your reproductive area, your strength area, and so forth. And yet he's saying, we've got to gird up the loins of our mind. I mean, the battle's in the mind today. In the, in the, the, the understanding, the imaginations, and all the, the faculty of the mind. Okay. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end, and I believe we've come to the end, for the grace that's to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, what did you see? Grace is to be brought to you at this revelation. Now, this revelation is first within, and yet it's without. Let me believe that. It's going to take the grace of God to bring you into this revelation. And it's going to take the grace of God to keep you because of what you're going to go through to receive this revelation. Are you, hear, are you hearing that? Look in 2 Corinthians 12. 
Let me show it to you. I mean, oh, God's got a balancing factor. And Paul said in verse 1, It's not expedient for me to doubt with the glory. I will come to visions and revelations of who? The Lord. How many want revelations of the Lord? we got all kinds of revelations floating around, but I want one of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether the body I cannot tell, or out the body I cannot tell. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words that's not lawful for a man to utter. Then Paul said in verse 6, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he sees me to be, or that he hears of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of what? What was the revelations of, though? Of Jesus, of the Lord. And he says, brethren, lest I would be exalted above uh, measure through the abundance of the revelations. Now, some of us had some revelation, but Paul said there was abundance of revelations of the Lord. I mean, no, we still got a bag that needs some more. <laughs> there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted, come on, above measure. For this thing I sought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is, come on, help me, sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. Now, that word sufficient is also another word that speaks of contentment. How many know we need some real godly contentment in our lives? And I know in my own life I've had to wrestle with this thing. And I know other ministries, it's at times seem like they're just driven to go and to go and to go. There comes a time we have to be contented and wait on the Lord for a period of time. Can you say Amen. And I believe we need that sufficiency in us. And it's the grace of God that can keep us. Amen? And whether we're full or have nothing, God can bring perfect contentment within us. And how many believe that? Hallelujah. And so Paul said there was given to him a thorn in the flesh. And Paul, of course, gladly received this thorn in the flesh. Turn over with me to um, Psalm 55 a minute. I want to show you a person that had no contentment for a period of time here. So, um, David in Psalm 55. David is crying out to God. How many know God hides from you? Do you know that? Do you know why God hides from you? God hides in order that you might start seeking Him. But God can be found, can He? Hallelujah. Give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend to me, hear me, I mourn and I complain and make a noise. And don't we all do that? Verse 3, because... Now here's why David's crying out. Because of the voice of the enemy. The enemy has a voice. Just as God has a voice. And that voice comes to our minds at times, doesn't it? Because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. I want to tell you, the enemy hates you. He's out to destroy you. My heart is sore pain within me. Notice it's affecting his heart. The terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, now notice, when we go through our problems, here, here's what we say. I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then I would fly away and be at rest. Notice, I'd fly away and be at rest. When there's no rest, there is no contentment, no peace. And don't we sing just about every Sunday? At least I don't. I used to. I'll fly away. Why are people saying I'll fly away? A lot of them want to get out of this world. I'm glad why they're saying it. But how many know there's a people going to endure to the end? Hallelujah. There's a people going to overcome. Come on, the world, the flesh, and the devil through the power of Jesus. Can you say amen? He said, I'd fly away and I would be at rest. Lo, then I would wander far off. It felt like getting away from everybody. And remain where? In the wilderness. Three, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. I'd help God out. I'd, I'd, I'd still leave in tomorrow morning. I'd leave tonight. Verse 9. Destroy, O Lord. Divide their tongues. I have seen violence and strife in the city. In this city. In his own city. In his own temple. He saw something. 
And if you come down to verse 16, this is what he says. Now, here's the answer. Here's the key. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many, come on, with me. Hallelujah. It may seem like all hell's against you, but let me tell you, there's more with you than there are against you. Can you say amen? Praise God. Go back to Revelation now. Go back to chapter 1 of Revelation. Hallelujah. The revelation of Jesus. And so we see something here. Now, hold your place in chapter 1, and I'm going to come back here, and I want to go to Peter right now, Second Peter 1. And I want to take you through a few scriptures the Lord gave me one time. He just like he stuffed them in my brain all at once by the Holy Ghost. And I want to take you into this word uh, here. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Second Peter 1, 16. And it says this. Peter said, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we have made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, he's talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. And there's so much we could go into about that. But he's talking about the word power and the word coming. Notice that. How many know the kingdom is coming in power? Oh, yes. The kingdom is the power of God. The kingdom is his lordship. The kingdom is a person. The kingdom is glory. The kingdom is majesty. The kingdom is the will of God. There's so, so many things uh, we could talk about when we talk about the kingdom of God. Now, he says here something here. He says in uh, this verse, notice, verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory. And notice, honor and glory was given to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. And the voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Verse 19, now notice this verse. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth, notice, in a dark place. I may believe that God's beginning to shine in some dark places in us. He's beginning to shine in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star, the word day star means morning star, arise, come on in, your heart. And that means to arise very rapidly, very quickly into the hearts of God's people. And that is Jesus coming forth within the people. He's arising in your heart. Let God arise. Come on, your enemies will be scattered. Now go over with me to Revelation 22, 16. Revelation 22. Let's follow this up now. Revelation 22 and verse 16. And notice this book has Jesus' special endorsement. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel. I have sent mine angel to testify to you these things in the churches. How many of an angel can testify of these things? This is not an angel that flaps its wings. This is a prophet. Do you know that? Look in chapter 22 and look in verse 8. John falls down to, uh, before the feet of his angel. And verse 9, the angel says, Do thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them that keep the sayings of this book worship God. This angel was a prophet. God's got some angels walking about today. Hallelujah. His apostles and prophets, come on, and evangelists and teachers and shepherds. Come on, help me now. And so he says back in verse 16, I have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. What things? The revelation of Jesus. I am the root and the offspring of David. What a teaching there is there. And the bright, come on, and morning star. Now, Peter said that morning star has to rise within your heart. Praise God. Then we go over to Revelation 2. Revelation 2, look at 26. Revelation 2, 26. And notice, brethren, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. He shall rule or shepherd them, the nations, with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, that's in small pieces, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him this overcomer, come on, the morning star, fullness of light. It is Jesus coming in his overcomers. 
ruling the nation. But how many know there's got to be some real overcoming to get to that place? You know, we don't just talk about these glorious things without having some things worked in us and taken out of us. Isn't that right? Now, turn with me. Let's see who the overcomer is. Turn to Revelation 21, verse 7. Let's see who the overcomer is here. Revelation 21, 7. It says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, or all these things, and I will be his God, and he shall be, come on, my son. God has a son, a corporate son, coming forth in this hour. How many believe that? Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Let's look at it. Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Look at verse 10. Hebrews 2.10, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons, come on, unto glory. I mean, we've been justified by his blood, we're being sanctified, and now he's going to glorify people. Can you say amen? He's bringing many sons. That word, uh, they're, they're, the word they're bringing means leading. It's the same word where it says the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. He's leading many sons unto glory. Hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But yet he's taken us into glory. Are you hearing? Into himself. Amen? He is the glory. How many believe that? He is the glory. And to make the captain of their salvation perfect through something. Suffering. For both he that sanctifieth, that's God the Father, and they who are sanctified, that's the people of God, or, excuse me, both he that sanctifies, that's Jesus, and they who are sanctified, that's the Father, that's the Son, are of one, the Father, for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. You hear that? Now, to, now turn to Romans 8, Romans 8, 29. Hallelujah, Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, that's foreknowledge, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Many brethren. Thank God. You know, the candlestick had a big shaft in the middle, and out of the shaft came the branches. Remember that? I mean, oh, he's the vine. We're the branches today. And that word, that word, that shaft, it actually means loin. How many know we've come out of his loin? We're out of him. And you know, only the Lord could uh, design that new man. And only the Lord could desire that new man. And only the Lord can demonstrate that new man. How many believe that? Only God can design that new man. Praise God, I said. Hallelujah. How many know that design is after him? Amen. It's according to his word. And then only God could desire that new man, that's his will. And only God can demonstrate that new man, that's his work that he's doing within a people. Praise God. How many believe that? So God is designed, God is desired, and God will demonstrate. It's his will, his word, and his work within a people. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a people being conformed to his image and to his likeness. Turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Galatians chapter 1. Paul says in chapter 1 and verse 11, he said, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel that was preached of me is not after man. For neither received it of man, neither was it taught it, but by, come on, the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation times past so forth. Now look down. To verse 15, For when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, what for? To reveal His Son where? In me and in you, brethren, that I might preach Him among the heathen. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood, because if you do, they'll talk you out of it. Hallelujah. So there is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We need that revelation. Let's go back to chapter 1. Chapter 1. I want, to, I want to touch on something here I missed while ago. Go back up to verse 3. Notice something. He said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things that are written therein, for the time is at hand. I want to take you through seven blessings in this book. Now, number one is recorded right here in verse 3. 
those that read, those that hear, and those that do. Now look in Revelation 14, 13. Revelation 14, 13. And let's see what it says. In fact, let's go back to verse 12. The Bible said, Here is the patience of the saints. Now, this is during the time of the mark of the beast and so forth. And I'll tell you what I believe. I believe God has a pure people coming forth. I believe God has people who have a pure mind, who will have a pure worship in them, who will have a pure word in them, who will have a pure heart before God, who will have a pure walk before God, who will have real uh, maturity, a pure a mature uh, word in them. Uh, I believe they'll have a pure mouth on them, and I believe they'll purely be purged. How many believe that? Hallelujah. And he says right here in chapter 14, in verse 12, Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and notice, the faith of Jesus. We've heard so much about faith, but how many know we need the faith of Jesus? We need the faith of Jesus. He's the author, come on again, and finisher of this faith. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead. Now notice, blessed are the dead. Here's the second blessing. Which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from the labors and their works. Do follow them. He's saying there's going to be a people that will die, and they will be blessed even though they lay their life down. Did you hear that? All right, let's turn to chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation 16, let's go to verse 15, actually. 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. That's the piece of an element of surprise. That's not just to the world. How many know that's to the church, too? Blessed is he that watcheth and keeps his garments, lest he lose his garments or walk naked. You can lose your crown and you, you can lose your garments. Hear me now. Lest he walk naked, be a layout of, lay of sin Christian, and they see his shame. Did you hear that? Now notice in that verse, he said, Blessed is he that watcheth. You're blessed if you watch, and if you keep your garments. Keep on your righteousness. The robe of righteousness that he's put on you. Don't lose it. Amen? Turn to Revel, uh, Matthew 22. Let's see. Somebody lost it. Don't have, didn't have one on, rather. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. And we're talking about the kingdom of God here. Chapter 22, verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king. That king represents God the Father. And he makes a marriage for his son. The son is the Lord Jesus. The word marriage is marriage feast. Let me tell you what I believe. I believe we're in the marriage feast right now. I mean, I know there's an ultimate uh, to this thing, a, a finish, whatever. But we're in the marriage feast right now. In America, we have the wedding and then we have the banquet. But the Jewish custom was have the banquet, then the wedding. And I believe we're in the marriage feast uh, with the Lord now. And that's why we must cry out for the Lord to come in us. And we must spend time with Him. How many believe that? We've got to have the oil in the vessel, brethren, at midnight. Now, it says, He sent forth His servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And notice something. They would not come. And the invitation is going out for many to come to the table. It's prepared. Just come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the marriage. Just come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and another scripture says another guy got married. To your farm, how many know that's where you raise the food? That speaks of the earth, that speaks of the carnal realm, but it raise, speaks of ra uh, raising food. The merchandising speaks of, speaks of a fortune, and of course, marrying speaks of a family. How many know sometimes food and fortune and family can get in our way? But thank God for the food we have, thank God for the family we have, and thank God for whatever God means God has given us. But he said here, they made light of it, one went back to his farm, one went uh, back to his merchandise. The remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not, come on, worthy. Now, what a scripture we could go into on that. No, there's no rapture. That's right, Glenn. 
Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to this marriage feast. So those servants went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on, come on now, a wedding garment. Now, if he was in heaven, that means God had to throw him out of heaven. Because this man's going to be tossed out. I mean, no, God's not going to rapture you to heaven and throw you out of heaven. And he said to him, Friend, how came us down hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless, and he said to the king to his servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and national teeth, for many are called. Come on, but few are chosen. Now back to Revelation. Now, we've seen so far there is, there is those who are blessed by reading and hearing and keeping the, this word. Those that lay their life down, those that watch and keep their garments. Now look in chapter 19 of Revelation, verse 9. Revelation 19, 9. And it says here, And he said to me, Right, blessed are they which are called, called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. So he said, You'll be blessed to be called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Chapter 20, verse 6 now. We saw this while ago. Look at it again. Chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Then in chapter 22 and verse 14. Oh, here's a powerful scripture we could spend many, um, much time with. It's a powerful word right here. 22, 14. Notice what he says. Blessed are they that do His commandments. They do. They walk. They keep the commandments of God. That do His commandments. That's His sayings, His words. That they, the same people that keep His commandments, they may have a right, come on, to the tree of life. And you read Revelation 2, it said the overcomer has that right, that privilege, that authority to the tree of life. Are you hearing that? What else did he say? He said something else. Notice, and may enter in through the gate into the city. How many gates are there? There's 12 gates. 12 is the number of government. And let me say it another way. It's 12 experiences within you and me, which speaks of God's government coming into a people. It is the fullness coming into a people. Now, these gates were made of pearl, and how many know pearl speaks of suffering? And if you're going to be an overcomer, how many know there's some real suffering to our flesh? And let me tell you where the suffering is. It's not so much out there. It's right in here. The persecution and suffering is right in this vessel that I have to overcome. Come on, help me now. A lot of it. And he said, though, to us, to those that, uh, that are blessed, will, or those who do his commandments and have the right or the authority to that tree of life, and they may enter into the gate into the city. And without, he said, are dogs. So let me say it this way. Those overcomers are going... Yes, the demons. Those overcomers are going to keep His commandments. Those overcomers are going to have that right to the tree of life. And those overcomers are going to enter through every gate into that city. In fact, I know this is heavy for some of it, possibly. But how many know a wall will keep you either inside or outside? And you can't really separate the city from the wall in one sense of the word. Because the city of God is real and the wall is real. Can we turn back to 21 just a minute before I say what I'm going to say? Revelation 21. John, in verse 2, said, I see, I saw the holy city. And notice it's new Jerusalem. God's doing something new. As I heard a man say recently, the seasons are changing. How many believe the seasons are changing? And when the seasons change, let me tell you what happened. You can't do anything about it. Number two, you got to flow with it. You don't wear, uh, as this, I heard this person say, you don't wear a coat uh, in the summertime. You don't wear a bathing suit in the wintertime. But you can't do anything about it. You have to change with it. And number three, God's purpose is to always reveal when the seasons change. I'm talking spiritual now, not just in the natural. And number four, I mean, oh, God is a God not of unity, but God is a God of diversity as well. And when the seasons change, there is diversity. And the way our ministries have operated in the past can operate no longer the same way. The way we fought cannot operate the same way. How I many know we've got to change? And the seasons are changing, and I thank God for that. And so right here, God said, this city 
It's, it's new, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, and God's a spirit, from so coming down from the Spirit of God, out of heaven, heaven's the realm of the Spirit, the heavenly realm, prepared as a bride, notice, adorned or garnished for her husband. I mean, believe the Lord's married to a people, not just to a, a building out here. Now, I've never been to heaven. I know it's a beautiful place, and I've, but I've never been there. But I'll say it this way. He's married to a people. He has a pure virgin coming forth. You believe that? A pure people. Now, verse 3. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the what? Former things. I mean, oh, there's some former things passing away. Come on. Old things are passing away. All things are becoming new. Where? Right in you and right in me. Next verse. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Hallelujah. Where? In you and in me. Are you hearing that? Hallelujah. Now look in verse... Oh, glory. Look in verse 10. Uh, verse 9. There came one of the seven angels, which have the seven vials of bold judgment going to be poured out, full of the seven last plagues. Now think about, about, about this. One of, the, uh, one of the seven angels come to John... He's talking to John. He said, come hither. Now, earlier John had been told to come up hither, and he was in the Spirit. Now he's saying, come hither or come closer. I want to show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And I believe that Lamb's wife is a people, not a city, a physical city. I believe it's a people Jesus is married to. Now, verse 10, he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain, and he showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, Descending out of heaven from what? Now look back in chapter 19 just a minute. Look back to verse 7. He said, Let us be glad and rejoice, give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife, his wife has made herself ready, and to her his wife was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. That's the overcomer's linen. Clothing. Linen and white. Notice, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, or the righteous act of the saints. And he said to me, Right blessed are they which are called, again, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, These are the true things of God. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is married to a people. Uh, let's go back now to Revelation 21. I want to see something here now. What verse did I stop? I stopped at a certain verse here. Oh, verse, verse 9. This angel comes and he said, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. So he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain. I believe this is the place in the Spirit that John saw the bride. And notice, he showed me that great city, the whole of Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And notice, it said, having or echoing the very glory of God. I believe his bride has the glory of God in her. When God finishes this work, how many know she'll have the glory of God in her? And her light was like unto a stone. Most precious. How many know that stone is Jesus today? Precious stone. How many know he's the stumbling block of many? He's a rock of offense to many. Like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. There is no darkness. Hallelujah. And notice, and had a great wall, great and high. So you got the city, and you got the wall. And had twelve gates. At the gate, twelve angels. The names written there were the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, and he gives the names on the east and north and south and west there. Verse 14, The wall of the city had twelve foundations, in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Verse 15, He that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates are all. That takes you back to chapter 1. Verse 16, The city lies four square. I want you to notice that. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height are what? Equal. And he measured the wall, 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man. How many believe he's got a man? I said he's got a man coming forth. He has broken down the middle of part to uh, the wall. He's bringing forth a new man in himself. And this measure was as a measure of a man. That is an angel, an angel's a spirit. This is a spiritual dominion, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, dimension, 
and notice the building of the wall was, a, was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like in the clear glass. Again, no darkness, complete total light. Now, what am I saying? I'll tell you what I'm saying. It's a strong word. Just don't take my word. The city is the bride of Christ, and the wall around that city are the sons of God that protect that city. Hallelujah. Turn back to Revelation 14. Hallelujah. Revelation 14. Revelation 14, I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him, and that phrase with him is only used three times, I found, chapter 17, chapter 20, and chapter uh, 14. There's somebody going to stand with him. How many is going to stand with Jesus? We know he's going to stand with us. Hallelujah. And those that are with him were 140 and 4,000. Now, I want you to think just a minute with me. Twelve times twelve is 144. Is that right? And the dimension uh, of the holy place, I won't give you all the tabernacles, was ten by ten by ten. Now, you multiply twelve by twelve, that's 144. Times ten by ten by ten, that's 144,000. What am I saying? The 144,000 are people who are going to move up into the holy of holies with God. Are you hearing that? They are going to be the sons of God who move into the throne of God, who overcome every obstacle, the world, come on, the flesh and the devil, and they'll move into that holy of holies with their God. How many want to move up into that area? Well, how many know it's a real overcoming to move up into that area? Now, look here what it says. Having his Father's name, nature written where in their foreheads, that's the mind of Christ, they their soul has been redeemed. Now, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Now, that's uh, prophesied way back in Ezekiel, I think, 43, prophesied that. And as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers. Notice, harping with their hearts. These are the worshipers of God. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man can learn that song. No man can learn that song. You go to every Bible college in town. Hear me now. But it takes a revelation of Jesus to show you who these people are here. Come on, help me now. No man can learn that song but, and I believe this is, I teach it, everybody teaches it different, but I'm, I'm, I'm not dogmatic, but I teach it symbolical. The number symbolical because of the dimensions that I go into sometime and teach it with. But the 144,000 were redeemed, notice, from the earth. From the earth. America, Russia, China, Israel, wherever. These are they which were not defiled with the harlot system, the women. Revelation 17. They are virgins, wise virgins. These are they which follow. Come on. The Lamb, whithersoever that he goeth, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no God. They were without fault before the throne. Hallelujah. God has a bride. Coming forth. How many believe that? Praise God. I believe it this way. I say it this way. There's the church. Out of the church comes the bride. Out of the bride comes the son. And yet the sons are part of the bride and part of the church. Said another way. There's Israel. There's Jerusalem. And there's Zion. Think of that in the natural. You got the natural Israel in the natural. You got Jerusalem, the city, and in the city is Zion. Same way today. We have Israel, the church. Jerusalem, the bride, the church. Uh, the, the bride, brother, and out of the bride will come forth Zion, the Son. Hallelujah. The church can be spoken of as Zion in a general sense, but the sons are, in a specific sense, are Zion. And how many of the Bible said that Zion has been engraved upon the palms of his hands? Hallelujah. God has resigned people. Listen, let me say it this way in closing. This people in chapter 14, they are first fruits unto God. They are the Lamb Company, and they are the Zion Company. And again, I believe they are this. They have a pure mind before God. There's pure worship in these people. They have a pure word that's been given to them. And they have a pure heart. They have a pure walk before God. They have the real, pure, mature word that's been given to them by God. They have a pure mouth before God, and they are purely purged. I said all that earlier, but these are the sons of God. That city is real. Those gates are real. And he said those that can enter those gates are those that will keep those commandments. 
Hallelujah. They have the right, the authority to that tree of life. They'll enter in through the gate. Thank you, Jesus. You can take the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve gates. Genesis 49, these twelve gates, and you can apply those, that teaching there with those twelve gates. The first, I'm going to close with this. I keep saying it, but I can't close until God lets me. The first son was Reuben. Reuben means to behold a son. Remember that? To behold a son. The first thing you did when you got saved, you began to behold the son, Jesus. But yet Jacob said he's unstable as water. How many know there's men in the church unstable today, today as water? We need some godly shepherds that will teach the truth and teach the word and plow deep into the hearts of the people. Can you say amen? And then the last son, I mean, the last son was, of course, Benjamin. The last gate, of course, would be the twelfth gate. But the, the, the twelfth son was Benjamin, the son of the right hand, who speaks of the overcomer. When he was born, his mother said he'd be called the son of sorrow, and Jacob said, no, his name is going to be Benjamin, the son of the right hand. And God's bringing forth a son in the earth, the overcomer. And I want to be one of them. Hallelujah. I want to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to overcome every obstacle. I want everything out of my life that's not like Jesus. I want a pure prayer life. I want a, a pure word from God. I want to walk with other ministries in the earth because I know without the fivefold ministry, this perfection and this maturity cannot take place that God has placed in the earth. Can you say amen? Let's stand. Praise God. We need the revelation of Jesus today. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, that this revelation is real. It is something, Lord, we're not just talking about today. It's more real than we are standing here today, Lord. And God, I thank you today that you are doing a work in a people. You're doing a work in the hearts of a people. You're doing a work in the minds of a people. God, we thank you that you're going to deliver many in this camp, Lord. You're going to set many free from things, Lord, that are in their way that would hinder them from coming on into these great uh, truths, Lord, that we have heard of today and spoken of today. And we ask the Holy Spirit to quicken us together, Lord, as we approach, uh, Lord God, your throne now. We ask, Lord, that you administer life to your people. We, bring, we pray you bring much encouragement to your people, Lord. We come against the very works of the enemy, Lord. Oh, God, that would hinder your people from receiving and attaining, uh, Lord, to that prize and to that crown and to that goal, Lord, that you set before us. Father God, forgive us, we pray, uh, in, uh, for lack of prayer in our own lives, Lord, lack of commitment in seeking the face of God. Lord, forgive us when we have not had that contentment and that rest of God within us as we should. Bring us into that very rest of God, that very contented place in you, Lord. Whether God, whether we sit or whether we go, Lord God, whether we move or don't move, Lord, we're in the will of God. Give us divine direction and guidance today, we pray. Father, bless the remainder of these services. Bless the ministry this afternoon with Brother Parrish and the ministry tonight with Brother Jack and the other services tomorrow and Sunday, Lord. We ask you to move mightily within your people, Lord. Encourage and strengthen and build up the people's faith, Lord. And that they may take it back, Lord, that which you have given them to other places when they leave this place, Lord. We ask, Lord, special strength for all the ministries again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Touch Glenn and Irma today, Lord. Touch the campground here, Lord. Meet every need financially, Lord, and spiritually, and mentally, and physically, emotionally. Lord, send in the workers that they need, Lord God. Give them the help, Lord, that they need. Send them, Father, from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Lord God, they will come voluntarily. There will God come with an open heart, Lord, and say, Yes, I've come to the vineyard of the Lord to work and to do uh, the will of God. Send them, Father, we pray, by the will of God. And we thank you, my Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap. Come on, give Jesus a praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord God does move in the earth. The Lord God does move and he does bring forth a pure people. The Lord does bring forth an anointed people in the earth in this hour. So my people, set your heart upon the Lord and know that God is among you and in your midst this day. And that every obstacle and every barrier that's been set up against you, know that the Lord is greater. And as you exercise your prayer life and as you exercise dominion, and authority, know that, that those things shall be broken down, and they shall fall uh, to the ground as chaff, saith the Lord. For I'm in thy midst to do a work in this hour. I, the Lord, do speak in this, this time to your hearts. And I, the Lord, do mend, and I do heal, 
and I do bind together a people in this hour. So worship me and know that I am in thy midst. I walk among my candlesticks. Yea, I give forth my light and my oil. So praise me this day and know that the work has been started and it shall be finished and performed as you submit to thy God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Linda, the Lord says he wants you to be encouraged today. He wants to encourage you very much in the Lord. And the Lord's hand is reaching out to you in this hour. And God said your feet are going to go many places. And the Lord said you're going to dance before him. You're going to do the dance of Miriam before the Lord with the timbrel and, and with the instruments of the Lord. And the Lord says, fret not what men would say or think or do. But God said, My hand is upon you, and I'm opening your eyes to see in this hour new truths and new visions from the Lord. And God said, In the wee hours and the dark hours of the morning, the light shall break through. The sun shall come up, the, light shall, uh, the, the darkness shall disappear, and the light shall appear. And the Lord said, There will be a breakthrough, and there will be a great change in your ministry and your life, and even friends and relationships. I'm going to bring a great change, said the Lord. I'm going to bring new people into your life. I'm going to cause you to be charged up like uh, within, uh, like a building going up from the ground floor up, God said. And I'm going to cause the light to penetrate and move out all the obstacles, and I'm going to pour myself into you, Seth, the Lord. Amen. Come on, praise him. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I like for this, uh, this man in the back here. I'll just come back there. Praise the Lord. Let's. Let's reach your hands out to this man back here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to minister to this man here. Praise the Lord. Let me have your hands, sir. Praise God. The Lord's reaching out to you today. And his hand is outstretched unto you. And the Lord said uh, that no weapon that's formed against you can prosper. And the Lord said, That which I promised I shall perform. That which I said I shall do. So know that the Lord is with thee. And the Lord is going to put the girdle and belt of truth upon you. The Lord is going to penetrate within you and do a mighty work in you. God's going to put some discernment within you. And God's going to show you some things that you know not of. But rejoice and know that my hand, my son, is upon you. Amen. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him today. Let's praise Jesus today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him today. Praise Yes, praise, 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 the Lord. praise, 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 we just lift up your people today, Lord. Bring forth that revelation. Bring forth that divine truth within your people. Bring forth that manifestation in your people, Lord. Bring forth, Lord God, within their hearts this day. Let that day star, that morning star, rise within them, Lord, this weekend, Lord. Oh, God, overshadow their hearts and minds today, Lord. Strengthen the people. Quicken them, Lord. Reveal yourself to them, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.